other thing we'll say about phasers <coughs> is that the Orion's like saying, oh, it can just knock down a small building or whatever else. Blah, 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 blah. Um, there's one thing that's wrong here. Alright, so the standard Trekkie claim for lack of anti armor, anti aircraft weaponry is a claim that a hand phaser can vaporize armor or bring down aircraft. And a lot of them do say it. I believe, pretty sure, Ryan, you said that. Uh, red shirt guy, you said it too. But that's not true. The hand phasers have never demonstrated an ability to punch through armor plating. We saw them blast chunks of rocks in TOS episodes where no man has gone, uh, TNG episodes such as Chain of Command, and DS9 episodes such as Nor to Battle to the Strong. We saw them blast pottery in Omega Glory, and we saw them make organic matter disappear into thin air in countless episodes of the autumn, TOS, TNG, and DS9. But rocks, samarics, and flesh are not metallic armor. Flesh is a low density material which is mainly composed of water. Uh, samarics and rocks are low density low des density materials with poor thermal and electric conductivity. Metal metallic armor on the other hand is a relatively dense material with excellent thermal conductivity. Electrical too. You know. The material dependent nature of a phaser is well established and their effective against armor. Effectiveness against armor is really just a lie. It's not true. I mean, countless episodes of incidents of shipboard combat throughout all of them TOS, TNG, TNG, DS9, and Voyager, but they have never blasted gaping holes within the thin walls. You know, extended blaster fi phaser fires were fired at an inactive shuttle at an inactive shuttle in Lower Decks episode. In order to make it look any damage, and they produced nothing but small scorch marks. Alright, these were high powered phasers shooting at a shuttle. Little scorch marks on that. Blasters would have torn it to bits after a few mm -hmm. shots. Just gotta be careful how you shoot it. Um, men use packing crates as cover against phaser fire in episodes such as Too Short a Season, among others, as well, and phaser fire couldn't penetrate them. So if phasers are so like Orion, Red Shirt, anyone else. If phaser fire is so effective, why can't they penetrate mere shipping crates? All right. Uh, like I said before, if you want to see the effectiveness of, effectiveness of military guns in a metal lined environment, episode four, when they break into the detention center, within seconds the room is choked with smoke from metal that is vaporized off the wall by blaster hits. Large chunks of the ceiling can be fallen to the floor when Chewbacca is firing his rifle. The men are even killed by shrapnel, which is thrown by the blaster hits in the wall. You know? That is really powerful. And has this uh, events like this, have they ever been observed in Star Trek? Nope. Never. Federation phasers are not anti-armor weapons. Not at all. Instead, their behavior is clearly targeted dependent. They make organic matter disappear into thin air. They have the effectiveness, effectiveness of blasting charges against rock. No almost no effect on metal unless it's extremely thin, like, I don't know, a cooking pot, a soda can. You know, something really small like that. Like, really, this is not super, this is not a theory or hypothesis. This is observation. Watch all the episodes. You will see that it is correct. What I'm saying. It is to completely correct. They ain't doing a thing. Really. They're not anti-armor weapons. Against metal? I mean, yeah. Against metal, phasers are like pop guns. Against rock, phasers are like grenade launchers. But, sorry, Ships aren't really made out of rock. Metal. There's a difference. But it's like, really, Trekkies, and I know, like, Orion, you being a Trekkie, uh, red shirt, just want to explain this by saying, making a vague reference to yield settings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. <sighs> you know, that just doesn't make any sense right there. That's never been observed in the films, really, except for 
first contact and they kept on making the phaser stronger and stronger you see Picard in his room trying to make it stronger and even those phaser bolts phaser blasts they beams I should say really didn't do it and it's like really overall any phaser use would be like if in a battle the best thing to do for your phaser probably would be suicide to avoid capture it's not going to do anything to an attack high bigger rebel weapons have been fired at attacks with practically no effect at all none you know man. and honestly another thing is the idea of using a small hand weapon or really not just hand weapon but small arms fire in general for anti-aircraft weapon that is ridiculous unless an aircraft is stopped and hovers at low altitude a human being has almost no chance of hitting it with small arms fire regardless of how good his gun is only robotics and computerized targeting systems can hope to hit a fast moving um, aircraft even automatic fire even with automatic fire and proximity fused fragmented fragmentation shells or whatever. No. So there's a snow speeder flying overhead. A re simple red shirt shooting at a phaser is going to have an extremely, extremely hard time hitting. Even if you did, it wouldn't really do much. So, no. Phasers not effective against metal. And you're just going to say I'm wrong, but Heck, go watch the films. You don't believe me? Watch the films. Tell me I'm wrong then. Uh, mines, they don't really use them. Given, like, given how people are, like, so upset against mines nowadays, and how more politically correct the Federation is in the films, they probably are outlawed in the Federation, which is really dumb, but. Um, no body armor. Federation doesn't have body armor in the entire series runs of TNG, DS9, or Voyager. Like, they seem to ignore the possibility of shrapnel from, like, any explosives, you know, grenades, helmets for combat, you know, no matter what you're doing, you're gonna, if you hurt yourself, head injury, you can hurt yourself, and it doesn't even have to be a battle, just driving, Flying, whatever else you hit, you get a concussion. You're out. You can't really do anything else. Mm. Um, really, it seems also another thing like um, chemical warfare, biological warfare, a ton of stuff like that. They're not prepared for that. They don't have anything to fight against that. You know, Imperial stormtroopers on board a ship, they could just take control of the ventilation systems and pour tear gas through or heck they can even pour the virus through and turn the entire crew of that ship into walking zombies <laughs> yeah no 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 I mean you can heal them if you get to the six bay that's what you know all the truckies say but it's like you know you have to get them to the sick bay first, you know, right? And while they're going there, they can easily transmit whatever they have to someone else. Or, depending what it is, it could already act before they get to the sick bay. And if it's the virus, you know, infects the person, and then that person infects the doctor that's taking them to there, you know, just a slow cycle, and then it gets bigger and bigger, faster and faster, the entire ship becomes infected with the virus. So, yeah. As far as Star Trek weapons, uh, Star Wars weapons, grenades, oh, there is so many. Thermal detonator, you got the sonic, here you got EMC grenades, you got flashbangs. There's just a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of grenades. You know, uh, flamethrowers, they do have flamethrowers. Main is used as a psychological weapon, because, you know, someone spring flame at you, that's pretty terrifying. Clearing out bunkers, 
uh, anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapons, the Plex 2M missile system, anti-vehicle missile launcher. This one is pretty good. It's actually the cool thing is, unlike most of it, it's not dedicated anti-vehicle. It can be used for anti-armor and anti-aircraft. The warhead will penetrate both vehicle's armors, and you just switch over to targeting system depending on what you're shooting at. Uh, let's see what else. There's much lighter anti-aircraft, anti-vehicle as the Golan Arms FC-1 Fletchet Launcher. Uh, it's like a almost like a sabot round from a M1A1 or M1A2, I should say. Pretty much like that. Um, other anti-aircraft, anti-aircraft, anti-armor anti-aircraft guns can be found on other vehicles. At hats Walker, you know, the chin guns, those are anti-armor. The, um, cheek guns on the side, though, those are more for anti-aircraft guns. They fire faster, better time at targeting snow speeders or whatever else. Uh, mines, there are mines used don't see them, but they are mentioned in numerous books. Space mines, ground mines, a lot of them. Body armor, I'm not going to really go into that. Stormtroopers, clone troopers, enough said. You know. Although we have to do say, though, we know how, stro how strong stormtrooper armor is against, like, um, kinetic energy or a blade or whatever uh, from the novel of lightsabers. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. The, um, this guy had a droid holding a wicked looking spear in his hand. Um, this droid replacement, whoever, the droid that was holding it, was holding the spear tight enough to dent the metal in the handle. So we know this droid is pretty powerful. So he takes his arm, cocks it back, hurls it. And he slams it against his, throws it against his chest, hits it dead center in this guy's chest, which is, um, he's wearing stormtrooper armor at the time. And it says he looks down his chest in amazement and sees that only a small nick in the white armor where the spear had struck. That is amazing armor. Yeah, shrapnel ain't gonna do a thing to that, sorry. And he had that droid had superhuman strength, such force that it lifted the man off his feet and hurled him against a nearby wall. That's wow, pretty powerful armor. So yeah, also we got different variants. We got stormtroopers, uh, snowtroopers. Apparently they're not. I don't know, but well, it's pretty much the same armor, just a different headpiece. Dark troopers are even more powerful. I mean, their armor self-healing. They can fly. I mean, you got, it's just a lot more powerful. Scout troopers, air troopers, uh, sea troopers, magnet troopers, radiation troopers, zero-g troopers. You know, send them watch it out. They can land on the top of the Enterprise. Blaster way in. Uh, special weapons. Empire has a lot of special weaponry, like lightsabers. Obviously, the average stormtrooper doesn't use them, but shadow troopers use them. Um, Imperial Saber Guards, you know, a whole bunch of people like that. Sonic Weapons, there's a lot, a lot of Sonic Weapons, those are going to have a devastating effect on any enemies, really. Seekers, uh, Episode 4, uh, Seeker, or Droid, that was shooting at Luke, per training droid, also known as a Seeker. Heck, you can just get, like, 50 of those, or more, and just let them loose on a ship. Those are incredibly hard to hit, and you can just let them loose. They're gonna go through and maul the crew. You can have them set and stun, stun all of them, bang, you're done. Let's see, um, disguises. You're saying how you're saying? I know the Orion. I'm pretty sure, or stick, stick craft said that people can't disguise themselves. You got hollow shroud. If you watch the Clone Wars, we see this there perfect representation of whoever you're trying to impersonate. Just put one of those on, suddenly you're a red shirt. You know? 
Let's see, um, planetary shields, they have planetary shields. Cover the entire planet, or can cover like a continent or whatever. Smaller, bigger. No, that's gonna block a lot of phaser fire. Sorry. Uh, but yeah. So really, that's the really the rundown between the two weapons. Uh, another thing you might say is that, well, the Enterprise can destroy a planet, 30% of a planet in like, five minutes, I believe it was. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but a Death Star can destroy an entire planet in less than two seconds. Yeah, keep that in mind right there. So yeah, this is, um, really, just a Star Trek weapon tree comparison compared to Star Wars. Um, Parse slash burning the Orion broadcast as well, if his supposed theories. So I eagerly wait any videos you may make. Bring them. I'm ready for you. So yeah, this is Ray Hess. Thank you for watching. Please comment, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff, and stay tuned for more.